Linux gaming has come a long way in the last two years, and in this video I would like to discuss how good exactly is the Linux gaming experience. I want to talk about the advantages of playing Windows games on Linux, because there are a good number of them, as long as we are not talking about playing new games on launch day, and I also want to talk about the problems you might encounter due to the fact that most games don't have a native Linux version, and you will be relying on compatibility layers to play most of your games. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's Let's discuss game compatibility and performance. Native Linux versions of games are rare, and in many cases rather terrible. The rule seems to be that if a Linux port uses Vulkan, then it's good, and if it uses OpenGL, it's pretty bad. In the case a Linux port uses OpenGL, just play it using Proton or Wine. You will get significantly better performance. There are Linux ports that perform better than the Windows versions, so Linux ports can be hit or miss. When it comes to games which only have Windows versions, things get complicated. Competitive multiplayer games usually don't work on Linux unless they have native Linux versions like CSGO and Dota 2, so if you play a lot of Warzone, Apex, Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, etc, and playing those games is the main thing you do on your computer, then Linux is not gonna work for you. If you want to switch to Linux because it will improve your workflow, but you still want to play big multiplayer games, then I recommend dual booting with Windows 10 and booting into Windows 10 when you want to play some multiplayer games with your friends. When it comes to single player games, things are much better. Most single player games work very well on Linux, but there is a catch. You can't play most big releases on launch date. A good example of this is Far Cry 6. It required some really hacky workaround to even get the text in the menus to show up. There are graphical glitches with certain Vulkan drivers, memory leaks with others, and opening the map sometimes offends the AMD GPU kernel driver so much that it decides to self-destruct. I get a black screen and I have to reboot my machine. That said, these issues will be fixed at some point, but if having to wait a couple of weeks to a few months after release of a big game to play it is too much for you, then Linux gaming is not that great for you. When it comes to games that have been out for a while though, the situation is completely different. With recent versions of DXVK, VKD3D and the Radeon Vulkan graphics drivers, many Windows games actually run better on Linux than they do on Windows itself, and smoother too, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. That said, not all games run better on Linux, but performance is pretty close, so as far as performance is concerned, Linux gaming is very competitive. You do however need to know that sometimes you will have to apply some performance tweaks to certain games, in the form of a bunch of launch commands. Another thing we have in Linux is the ability to use FSR in pretty much any game by using certain custom Proton or Wine versions. I have a video on it if you want to know how to use it. I know this is doable on Windows, but it's more work and I've heard it adds some input lag, which is not the case on Linux. Valve are huge proponents of Linux gaming and the Steam Deck is going to run Linux out of the box. This will probably lead to some improvements in the Proton compatibility layer, because Valve have financial incentive to improve it. This will also lead to improvements in gaming on the Linux desktop, like solving the annoying media foundation issues, which prevent pre-rendered cutscenes from playing in so many games. Sure, you can fix this issue in certain games, but no general solution exists currently. So, if Valve can fix this issue, then the number of games playable on Linux and the Steam Deck will increase quite dramatically. Now, let's go beyond playing the games themselves and discuss things like recording and streaming gameplay. For recording you have plenty of options, like OBS, Simple Screen Recorder and using FFmpeg directly from the terminal. Most people will probably gravitate towards OBS because it's the most feature rich and simultaneously the easiest to use piece of software available. If you are familiar with OBS Studio on Windows, it works the same way on Linux. The NVENC encoder works like it does on Windows, but hardware encoding on AMD GPUs is a bit of a pain to set up. To get AMF encoding in Linux, you need to install the Vulkan and AMF components of the AMD proprietary driver stack, the StreamFX OBS plugin and OBS VK Capture. I have a script on GitHub which you can use to install the driver components on ArchBase distros if you need it, but you can also use the AUR. For more details, check out this video on my channel. Sadly, we don't have AMF H.265 encoding and are limited to AMF H.264 on Linux. Streaming on Linux using OBS Studio is pretty much the same as it is on Windows, so you don't really feel limited in any way. I do need to add that while OBS Studio is on Linux, 
things like Streamlabs aren't, so you will have to stick to OBS Studio itself, and not some strange forks of it. So, what can I conclude about the state of Linux gaming? Well, it's still inferior to Windows overall, but if you know how to use Linux and don't want to play every single AAA game on launch date, or play big multiplayer titles, then it's a pretty good experience. Is it an easy click and play experience? Sometimes it is, it depends on the game you want to play. Some games just work out of the box, like the Souls games and Sekiro, but some require tweaking to run well. Overall, an experienced computer user will have very little issues figuring these things out, but someone who just uses their computer to browse the web and play some games will find it extremely difficult, which will put a lot of people off from using Linux, even if they're tired of Microsoft's nonsense. That said, Proton and Wine will keep getting better, and if things keep improving at the same rate, then I'm pretty sure that by 2025 gaming on Linux will be pretty much superior to gaming on Windows. DXVK on Linux is pretty much already dominating native DX11 on Windows, in many cases when it comes to performance, so VKD3D will probably do the same in a couple of years. I am very sure Valve will fix the media foundation issues at some point. It probably won't be by the time the Steam Deck releases, but it will probably happen by the end of the year. So we do have to be patient. The anti-cheat situation is the only thing I don't see getting fixed anytime soon, but fixing everything else will probably be enough to make Linux gaming amazing for an extremely large number of people. What do you think? How good do you think gaming on Linux currently is from your experience? And do you think it will be able to catch up to Windows sometime soon? Or do you think that that will never happen? This was all for today. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.